call this meeting to order of the Green Bay Plan Commission for August, I'm trying to find the date on this, is it the 10th, 2020? Good, I got a thumbs up from Kevin. Um, and uh, we need to start with the roll call. Uh, the chair is vacant. The vice chair is Sid Bremer, that's myself, and I am present. Uh, Alder Veronica Corpus Dax. Uh, present, but I'm going to be stepping out momentarily because I have an item on protection and policy that is coming up. So oh, okay. I'll pop out. We will miss you. Will you Will you be back? Yes, I'll be back. Excellent. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Lisa Hansen? Present. Present. Commissioner Jacob Miller? Present. Commissioner Randall Petrosky? Present. And Commissioner Darius DJ Daniels. Present. Wonderful. Glad to see you all here. Okay. Um, uh, we need a motion to approve the agenda for August 10, 2020. So moved. Oh, Second. my. Second. I think there was a threesome there. Um, <laughs> I'm going to recognize Alder Corpus Dax on that motion, and may I have a second? Second. Thank you, Randy Petrosky. Um, and any objections to approving the agenda? Then I'm going to declare it approved as uh, distributed. Then a motion to approve the minutes by 13, 2020, meeting of Green Bay Plan Commission. So Don't move. Get shy. So move. Thank you, Commissioner Petrowski. <laughs> Um, I've got one from Commissioner <laughs> Daniels. Okay. Um, anybody object to the approval of the minutes? Seeing none, I declare them approved and we will continue on to our regular business. First of all, the first item is the election of a chair for the Green Bay Plan Commission due to a vacancy. Uh, and I'm wondering, do I have a motion from anybody out there? If not, I will offer one. Then I would like to uh, nominate Commissioner Lisa Hanson. And do we have a second? I'll toss in a second on that. Oh, good toss. Thank you, Commissioner Miller. <laughs> um, any other nominations? Then all those in favor of Commissioner oh, Lisa Madam, Hansen. Madam no? Chair? Yes? Just to be proper, you need to ask two more times. Oh, thank you. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Yep. I should know that from the open meetings. Uh, is there any other nomination? Is there any other nomination? That makes a total of three. So I will uh, ask, I believe, do we need a roll call on this? Uh, that would be appropriate, yes. Okay. Uh, as the nominator, I'm happy to vote in favor of Commissioner Hansen. Um, how about Veronica Corpus Dax? Oh, I can vote. Aye. Great. And uh, Commissioner Lisa Hansen? I probably can't vote for myself. Sure, you can. Yep, you're uh, able. Mm -hmm. Aye. Carol. Chair, Dave's nodding. All right, then okay. aye. <laughs> Commissioner Jacob Miller? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Randall Petrosky? Aye. And Commissioner DJ Daniels? I could see your mouth move in a nice eye there, DJ, but I'm missing the sound of you. Any idea where that would have gone to, Kevin? Uh, it doesn't look like DJ has himself muted, but um, yeah. we got the eye with the uh, thumbs up. So, uh, Commissioner Hansen, uh, you are now the chair of the committee, and you may continue with our agenda. Well, I certainly appreciate um, being nominated and becoming chair, and I hope that I don't mess it up too badly. So. <laughs> All right, so uh, regular business, item two. Um, public hearing, well, I guess I'll go through this first. Um, 
This public hearing has been properly posted and public notification has been published in the Green Bay Press Gazette. The Plan Commission is interested in hearing public comments on the subject agenda items. We invite your comments and ask that after your name has been called, you state your address, whether you represent a group or association, whether you favor, oppose, or are only providing information in this matter, and your comments or concerns. We also ask that you confine your testimony to facts related to the proposal at hand and avoid repetitive testimony. You must be recognized by the Plan Commission in order to speak and please address your comments to the chair. We will now open the public hearing on item two, public hearing on a request to amend the Legends District PUD submitted by Jess Miller, property owner. Thank you. I think that we are doing staff presentations at this point. So I'll just give you guys a little bit of background on this PUD amendment. Um, so some of you may recall that we expanded an initial PUD that was established in um, 2011. Um, that was expanded twice now. So this is our third amendment to this PUD. The last amendment was to add in the Legends District Master Plan information. That included, um, including which would be now Exhibit C, which is a chapter on design qualities. So that is to make this entire area more cohesive with the Legends District Master Plan that was adopted back in 2016. So on the map here, you can see the parcel that's outlined in aqua at the corner is the bar, which is property. The property is located in the city of Green Bay. Parking lot is in Eshwabanon. So the grayed out area is the village of Eshwabanon. The red area around that is our notification area for property owners. And then the purple outline that's around the Legends District is where the current boundaries of the Legends PUD expand to. Um, this application, I'm sorry, could you advance to the next slide? Thank you. Um, this gives a little, which is not accurate anymore. The PUD boundary um, that covers here in black, there are a lot of PUDs in this area, so you may be confused with the boundaries here, um, is generally C1 in zoning. There are some caveats within the um, PUD that cover for some other industrial type of uses, but right now it's generally just proposed for C1 zoning. And then there are some additional industrial around the area. And then once you go north of Lombardi, it's primarily a residential area. Next. Um, so the proposal that came in, they were initially just a proposing that they do a rezoning of this property. Um, after looking and realizing that it was in the Legends District area, we proposed the expansion of the PUD because it covers that rezoning of their property. They were looking for a commercial property um, zoning and the PUD does cover that. Along with that, it also already coincides with the rest of the Legends District PUD, which includes uh, material types, size, setbacks. Um, so all the specifications that they sent over were already in um, agreement with that PUD. So the uh, uh, amendment to this PUD is really just adding this parcel in so that way it's part of that larger Legends District area, um, but also then covering that zoning change that the petitioner was looking for. I think there should be one more slide here. And this gives you a little bit of an overview from bird's eye. So the existing building is um, located here. The square that's in yellow is the proposed addition to the building. And then they're doing an expansion of the patio area that already exists. So um, this space already has minimal green space as it is. Um, we don't have much control over the entirety of the site, including the landscaping of the parking area because that's in the village. Uh, but the expansion itself that they're proposing on site does fall within the existing requirements of this PUD. Uh, so we are recommending the approval um, subject to the draft um, that was included. Um, the draft really only adds in that parcel. It doesn't change any of the PUD language. So if there are any other questions regarding that, we can discuss that at the next action for the zoning approval. Okay, thank you, Steph. Um, so now we're taking testimony for people who are in favor of the request. Um, I don't know if you guys can see everyone and see if there's someone that is looking to speak on this. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak opposed? Is there anyone looking to provide information only? All right, so 
let the record reflect that no one came forward. Um, I guess I knew, do need to ask three times, right? Is there anyone that is wishing to speak on this item? Is there anyone wishing to speak on this item? Is there anyone wishing to speak on this item? Let the record reflect that no one came forward. This public hearing is now closed. And we will move on to agenda item number three, consideration with possible action to amend the Legends District PUD submitted by Jess Miller, property owner. Same spiel as before. Uh, we do have Dave O'Brien here who is um, part of the application team. If you do have any questions that you wanted to direct um, specific to the site and the expansion. Okay. Is there anyone that has questions for staff? I'd move to approve. I, I second that motion. I'm okay, very so motion. How well I, it fits the industrial sheet. So a motion by Commissioner Petrosky, second by Commissioner Brummer or Vice Chair Brummer. Um, is there any further discussion? All right. If uh, are we doing a hand vote or should we do a roll call vote? I don't see all the people. <laughs> okay. Should we just do we do a raise of hands or should we do a roll call vote? Um, since we're not using civic clerk, I would just recommend a roll call just for the record. Okay. All right. So Vice Chair Bremer? Yes, I vote in favor. Okay. Uh, Alder Veronica Corpus Dax? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Petrowski? Aye. And Commissioner Daniels? All right, and I will also vote in favor of this. So unanimously approved, and we move on to the next public hearing. All right, so now we'll open the public hearing on item number four, public hearing and a request to amend zoning ordinance 6-20 Whitney Park townhomes to adjust lots and impervious surface regulations at the 200 block North Van Buren Street submitted by Garrett Bader on behalf of GB Real Estate Investments LLC property owner. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is David. Um, so the, you're probably all very familiar with this site. Um, it is on the northwest corner of Cherry Street and North Van Buren Street on the uh, near east side of Green Bay. Um, it was originally developed, uh, there was a planned development put on this site in 2018, originally to develop um, two sets of two unit semi-detached single family homes, basically townhomes, two unit townhomes, uh, two sets of them. Uh, that was amended uh, earlier this year uh, to increase that volume to two more or one building of two more units to the north. Um, the original plan development set all kinds of parameters and regulations including lot widths, lot area, setbacks. Um, and so when this came through earlier this year, uh, the developer um, had submitted plans and he could meet all those regulations. Since that time, he was unable to get about two feet of the neighboring property owner, just over two feet of the neighboring property owner to the north. Um, and if you could advance the slides a little bit, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. So you can see this is um, comprehensive plan recommends high intensity retail officer housing, which this is compatible with. And advance again, please. The zoning is all office residential is a mixed use zoning um, and one more okay so what you see on the screen now on the left hand side was the original proposal that um, showed a lot width of 27 feet you can see that enlarged up in the upper right hand corner that 2.16 feet or 2.15 feet um, the petitioner was unable to acquire that um, at this time so they are requesting to amend the lot width of the northernmost lot, which is lot six, from the 27 feet to 
eight, seven feet. So just a little over two feet difference. Um, that in itself isn't as big of a deal, but what it does is it has a couple domino effects. So when you reduce that lot width, the area also gets reduced. So the original plan development required 2,800 square feet of lot area. Uh, when you remove that little over two feet, it drops down to about 2,700 square feet of lot area. So it's short of the PD. Um, and then also with the development proposal, um, as put forward and matches what's existing out there, the impervious surface coverage uh, for that lot increases um, to 68.7 feet. They have a maximum impervious surface coverage in the PD of 65%, or excuse me, 68.7%. Uh, that's a 65% max. Um, so at this time, the developer uh, is coming forward to request an amendment to that plan unit development uh, that would really only affect lot six. So they're requesting lot six be allowed to be 24 feet, um, the area be reduced, and the impervious surface coverage allowance to be increased. Um, so as you can see on the map, uh, it's very minimal change to property lines. Uh, now, while staff would like to see a nice uniform set of lots along North Van Buren at, you know, at least 27 feet, in reality, uh, the look and layout of the development is going to remain exactly the same. You know, these property lines are not visible in the real world. Um, one of the main reasons for that lot width requirement of 27 was to provide enough setbacks to be able to meet building codes requirements as far as fire separation between buildings. Um, in the last plan development, um, we did put a requirement in there that they have at least the 10 foot setback. It can be reduced down to three feet if they provide a no build easement on the neighboring lot. Um, the developer has secured that seven foot no build easement. So there should be no issues with building separation. Um, but, the PUD does have to be amended to allow those reductions that I just mentioned, the three reductions. Um, the one thing I did want to point out is in that OR district um, for single family attached homes, the minimum lot width is only 24 feet and the minimum lot size is 2,500. So if you're using the base zoning, uh, what's being proposed for the PUD amendment would meet that base zoning. The main reason for the PUD amendment um, originally uh, was these are these are um, only two single family attached connected together, essentially a duplex, a two family home, um, and those are not permitted in the OR district. So um, the PUD was primarily done for that. It also did some allowances to allow connections with um, decks and that kind of thing. Um, but with that being said, um, I guess I'll wait for the next item since this was just the public hearing. And if you, if you advance the slide one more, you can get a look of what those buildings are gonna look like. Design is gonna be exactly the same. Those are the two existing buildings that were built and you can see the third would go right next to it. That house is um, either down already or going to be coming down where the proposed two family is. Thank you, David. Um, so now we'll be taking testimony from interested parties. Um, I guess if there's anyone looking to speak that is in favor of the development. Is there anyone looking to speak who's opposed to the development? And is there anyone else providing information only? All right, is there anyone else wishing to speak? Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Let the record reflect that no one came forward. Are you my pizza? Uh, so the public hearing is now closed. So, Very good that you're eating pizza. You're eating pizza, go by daddy, okay, honey? Awesome, great, thank you. Great timing. All right, so now on to the next agenda item. 
which is uh, item number five, consideration with possible action on the request to amend zoning ordinance 6-20 Whitney Park townhomes to adjust lot and impervious surface regulations for lots within the planned unit development at the 200 block North Van Buren Street submitted by Garrett Bader on behalf of GB Real Estate Investments LLC property owner. Thank you, Madam Chairman. So as I just explained, um, staff is recommending approval of, of the amendment uh, subject to the draft plan unit development that was in your packets. Okay. Um, we have contacted the older person for the district, uh, the neighborhood association and owners within 200 feet. Um, only received a couple calls of inquiry, um, no objection. Okay, does anyone have any questions for staff? I do, please. Right, go ahead, Sid. <laughs> Sorry if I sneaked in there. Um, I just wanted to seem to me that the kind of changes that we are talking about here are the sorts of things that would normally go to the zoning appeals board uh, in request of a variance. Can you explain to me, David, why that is not the case here? Certainly. Um, so the zoning board of appeals is going to deal with. Um, variances or variations to the zoning code. Uh, because this is a planned unit development, it's its own zoning ordinance. So the uh, authority to augment that is at the council level rather than the Board of Appeals. Thank you. Commissioner Miller. Uh, Sid stole part of my question, but I had a little extra nuance to it. Um, so this is certainly a type of development we'd like to encourage. Um, just wondering if there's a, a way uh, for possible future developments to kind of allow a little bit of flexibility on this particular aspect so we're not adding this additional step of having to go through it for developers. Um, I don't know if that actually makes sense in a, from a, a legal standpoint, but it's certainly something we want to encourage, so I'd hate to put more roadblocks in the way of it. Is there anyone else that has questions for staff? Commissioner Daniels? Ooh. I don't think it's working. <laughs> oh, still not. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get him unmuted. We heard him before. He's unmuted here. Um, so he's accessing through his phone. I don't know on your phone oh. itself. Are you muted or the microphone muted there? Huh. I heard him earlier when he checked in. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see the phone connection any longer. Oh, DN through nineteen oh six. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he's not connected via audio. So we see him, but I think he needs to connect back to audio. And Jake, I guess to answer your question a little bit while DJ is getting his audio uh, working. Um, yeah, the underlying zoning does have smaller regulations. Um, and internally, staff has been talking about lot widths, um, allowable uses in different districts um, to make it much more, uh, I don't know how to put it, developer friendly or the ability to have a diverse amount of housing. Yeah, our code's pretty good, but. We'll be working on that. You'll be seeing stuff. Yes, uh, Madison and I are actually working through right now, updating our chapter 14, which is our subdivision code. Um, so we do rely on the zoning code to set some of those parameters as far as lot size, lot width. So those can be changed within our subdivision code that then change that section of our zoning code. So we've already had the discussions of minimizing at least a lot widths and then some of the sizes depending on the zoning district or maybe doing away with it being corresponded with the zoning district specifically and having it more like per development like if it's a single family what that looks like if it's a townhome style what that looks like so with our chapter 14 update this should be taken care of have we gotten oh, no, curses no not no sir we cannot <sighs> oh, right. You can this chat's the, acceptable. Chat. So we figure this out. If you want to type in the question, you can read it. Hmm. 
Okay. Okay. So um, this was just to me, but um, Commissioner Daniels wishes to recuse himself uh, from this vote. I'm um, just due to a, a personal connection with the applicant. So thank you for noting that, Commissioner. Okay, is there anyone that's wishing to speak about this or speak to this that's not part of the commission? All right, then the chair would uh, entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion by Alder Corpus Dax and a second by Commissioner Petrovsky. Is there any further discussion? All right, hearing none, I'll go through and do a roll call vote. Uh, where am I going here? Vice Chair. Yes. Alder Corpus Dax? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Petrosky? Aye. And Commissioner Daniels? The thumb works. Has to be, thumb. Has to be, he has to be uh, recused. Oh, that's right. I'm yep. sorry. Oh, that's so right. Duh. I will vote in favor. So that is... Uh, approved and then i guess when does this all go on when's the next city council meeting for all of these agenda items uh these will be on at council next tuesday the 18th okay all right so then on to agenda item number six consideration with possible action on the request for a partial discontinuance of a landscape easement located at 2845 greenbrier road Aurora Bay Care Medical Center, submitted by Brian Rasmussen. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this is a little bit different from what we usually look at with easement discontinuances. This is a landscape specific one. Um, this was established once Aurora had built up their campus here to um, assure that there was a buffer between their campus and then to the south, the village of Bellevue's neighbors. Um, so this application is actually a little weird because we didn't have any neighbors of our own to notice. So this was actually sent through the Village of Bellevue's planning department to make sure that they had uh, proper notification to those neighbors as well. Um, and the applicant had already held a public meeting, a neighborhood meeting with the Village of Bellevue and other city residents to make sure that they knew what was happening here. So just to address those neighborhood concerns, just because it's on the border, they still got proper notification of this. Um, so this is the Aurora Bay Care campus that's um, in the I-43 business park. Um, the site plan here shows where the proposed new driveway would be, and that is what they're requesting that easement discontinuance for, for that landscape easement. So on the um, south side here, you can see the proposed ambulance entrance. They are requesting an entrance only, emergency vehicle only driveway cut here. Um, this would be signed and have an emergency arm gate. So there is no exiting on this. Um, there's also no access to regular vehicular access. Um, so they are anticipating only 77 trips per week that would be used in this driveway here. Um, there had been some discussion about lining this up with Sleepy Hollow Court um, that's in the city or village of Bellevue. Um, they had opted for this because of the grading at, at that intersection. Um, I believe that there has with the village of Bellevue itself or its um, neighbors. I've only received one um, request from someone who lives in the city of Green Bay, who is a neighbor of this, and they just wanted to see if sidewalks could also be installed, but they are in support of this drive access. Um, so we had notified the Alder adjoining property owners, the Bell Valley View, and then any of our reviewing agencies, and we didn't receive anything um, negative in return. There are a couple conditions as far as our utility providers are concerned, which I'll get to later. Um, this here is a rendering that just shows what it would look like. Um, so again, just a simple drive, emergency arm gate and sign. So it's only emergency vehicles only. I'm not sure what else is next. Okay. All right, so the recommendations here we had with um, AT&T came back with this um, condition. We have um, the applicant who is here today 
they are in touch with AT&T working through this to get a solution. And we just have it that has to be met and given back to us prior to recording the discontinuance of this easement to make sure AT&T's facilities are taken care of here. And then our Department of Public Works added that in the event that sidewalks do get installed here, that this has to be regraded to our current grading plan at that time. So we are recommending approval of this request. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Um, anybody have any questions for staff? I do, Madam Chair. Uh, Stephanie, I'm baffled by requiring the adjacent owners to do the regrading on any sidewalk that might go through here when the issue would be caused by Aurora Baycare. Adjacent at in Aurora Bay Care. So adjacent to where the sidewalk would go, those people are responsible for regrading, not the property owners on the other side of the street. Okay, so it is a reference to Aurora Bay Care. Thank yep, you. that's the language that they use that if it's it's meant to be adjacent to that public facility. So if you're an owner that's adjacent yeah. to that, so it would be Aurora Bay Care would be responsible for that grading. Thank you. Are there any other questions for staff? I can't. Can you put up, thank you. All right, no other, is there anyone that wants to speak on this item outside of the commission? I guess the, the chair would entertain a, a vote or a, a motion. Move to approve. I second. Okay. Move to approve by Commissioner Petrowski, a second by Vice Chair Bremer. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, the take a roll call vote. Uh, Vice Chair Bremer? Aye. Alder Corpus Dax? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Petrowski? Aye. And Commissioner Daniels? Aye. Hey! Yay! Awesome! All right. <laughs> I just disconnected my phone. Oh, you got your voice back. <laughs> All right, so uh, unanimous vote. And we move on to the next agenda item. Um, and the next agenda is a public hearing. Um, so we will now open the public hearing on item seven. Public hearing on a request to amend Chapter 13-1716, Green Bay Zoning Code regarding game day parking. Thank you, Madam Chair. I can just give a real brief overview. So this is an amendment, a text amendment to our game day parking requirements like we, um, so these have been on the books for several years. Um, when you go out by Lambeau Field and you see people parking, um, on the grass on Shadow Lane and on Kenwood and Thorndale. Uh, this is the uh, um, ordinance that regulates that particular uh, use. So this amendment would expand. Uh, currently it's limited to residential vehicles. Uh, the amendment would include now uh, an expansion to mixed use districts, uh, commercial and industrial districts. So it's more uh, even, so to speak, uh, to uh, account for other zoning districts within the uh, Lambeau Field area. Okay, thank you, Paul. So now with the public hearing, we will take testimony for people first who are in favor of this. Is there anyone wishing to speak that is in favor of this? All right, is there anyone wishing to speak that is opposed? Is there anyone wishing to speak to provide information only during the public hearing of this item? Is there anyone looking to speak on this? Is there anyone that wishes to speak? Is there anyone that wishes to speak? Let the record reflect that no one came forward and this public hearing is now closed. We move on to agenda item number eight, consideration with possible action on a request to amend chapter 13-1716, 
Green Bay Zoning Code regarding game day parking. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have the current language up on the screen just so you can see what it currently looks like. Um, and then I'll put up the proposed language here. Uh, again, it's, it's to include uh, mixed use, commercial and industrial zone properties. And we've kind of done some reformatting to kind of put it back into one paragraph. So uh, staff is recommending approval of this request as proposed. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Uh, is there any questions for staff? Uh, so I'll just iterate a little bit. You're wondering, like, right, in the season when you possibly could have no games, why are we touching game day parking? Uh, so this is, like, right, one of those sacrilegious parts of the ordinance. So I figured, like, I'll wait till my last meeting to touch it um, <laughs> versus get the angry mobs out here. I, I think what we looked at here is, um, you know, what's on the books versus what happens in reality. Um, and I think, you know, it, it's great that we codify you know, really what's part of our tradition here in this community, um, but really was blank when it came to talking about, well, what about parking at all these businesses that are around the area? You know, it only allowed for specifically residential. So I think just for us to clean it up, to say, here's what you can do and here's what you can't do. Um, you know, again, we're, we're just putting into codification, um, you know, what, what goes on in, in practice. And just at the end of the day, you know, for the most part, 99% of the time, we do not have issues, um, but it's just good to have this on the books as it's done, um, just in case there is something in the future that we are able to take enforcement action if, if necessary. So, um, you know, with that, and I guess a, a quieter year, maybe it's a good time to do that. Did not anticipate that when we started talking about this, um, you know, a, a few months ago, um, but ultimately I think this would be, you know, um, again, just kind of shoring up something that, um, you know, happens and, and really just making it much more uh, specific. Thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, is there anyone else that's looking to talk about this? Otherwise, uh, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Daniels, a second by Alder Corpus Dax. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and take a vote. Um, Vice Chair Bremer. <laughs> but Sid. Vice Chair oh, Bremer. Aye, aye. Aye. All right, I missed. Alder Corpus Dax. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Aye. Commissioner Petrowski? Aye. And Commissioner Daniels? Aye. And I will also vote aye on the matter. And moving on to the next item, which is a public hearing. So we will now open the public hearing on a request to amend Chapter 13 522 Green Bay Zoning Code. Wait, did I just do it again? Is it on there twice? No, oh, this is a code. Oh, sorry, 13-522. This is a different one. It's just slightly different. Uh, regarding game day camping. So with that, are there, we'll take testimony for the public hearing. Is there, are there any parties interested that are in favor of this that would like to speak? Oh, I guess, does staff wanna speak about this first? Sure, we could, real briefly. Um, much like the previous item, this is related to uh, game day events. Um, so when there was an, an event at Lambeau Field, like a Packer game uh, or a collegiate game, uh, campers tend to come and show up and they don't always stay in hotel, hotel rooms. They uh, sometimes camp in and around the stadium. And that's an issue we've kind of noticed uh, in the past couple of years. So. Actually, we've had some issues uh, recently with our fire department and, and people doing this illegally, almost causing a, a potential hazard. So to be kind of proactive, we uh, have developed some language, again, to deal with kind of this game day situation where people who are bringing uh, campers have to basically comply with the standards that are proposed here, again, to uh, kind of have a safe environment um, unlike before. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and take testimony. Is there anyone in favor wishing to speak about this item? 
Is there anyone wishing to speak who is opposed to this item? Is there anyone wishing to speak that's providing information only? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Is there anyone wishing to speak on this item? Let the record reflect that no one came forward and this public hearing is now closed. And we move on to agenda item number 10, consideration with possible action on a request to amend chapter 13-522 Green Bay Zoning Code regarding game day camping. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is new language that's being added to the uh, temporary use section of our zoning code. Um, so I've got it up on the screen. Basically, it's two days before and two days after the game day event that uh, this can occur. Basically, you need to you know, file a site plan with the city ahead of time, the property owner does, and meet those standards that are on the screen. Um, that's, we felt the best control to, to allow the use and, and be able to police the use. Okay, does anyone on the commission have questions for staff regarding this? Can I get the gallery view, please? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Commissioner Brummer? Um, Paul, I was wondering how much area this involves. You're referring to, is it mixed use as well, commercial property or industrial and commercial property, right? Right, so it's limited to commercial and industrial. And there is some of that in and around Lambeau Field. It's, it's mainly the commercial properties. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Is there anyone outside of the commission that would like to speak on this item? Okay, I, the chair would entertain a motion. I move to accept the recommendation of staff. All right, so a motion by Vice Chair Bremer and a second by Alder Corpus Dax. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll go ahead with a roll call vote. Uh, Vice Chair Bremer? Aye. Alder Corpus Dax? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Petrowski? Aye. Commissioner Daniels? Aye. And I will also vote um, aye on this item. All right, so then moving forward into informational, um, starting with land division annual review. The most exciting thing that you guys are gonna hear all day, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> so as you may or may not know, the plan commission has given an administrative task for land division within Green Bay, which means that we have to annually report out what we've done as far as platting throughout the city. Um, so last year we didn't have this because we had zero plats in 2019. So we haven't done this in about two years now. And we only have three right now. Um, I'm gonna pass this over to Madison Smith. She's our new planner one. I'm not sure if you all have been introduced to her or not. She's taking over the land divisions going forward. Um, she's almost done with her training. So I'm going to toss it over to her. If you want to go through the slides, please. Sure, thank you. I know you guys can't see me, but I hope you can hear me okay. Um, do you want to swap the screen? So this is the first one we have, um, Bradley Estates, and this is on the east side, um, 420 Ontario Road. Uh, right now, this is a proposed 14 single family uh, development. This, the pre-final was approved and we are waiting on the final. Um, next slide. I'll just give you a run through on all of them and we can probably go back if anybody has any questions. So this is the second one, Excalibur. This is the fourth um, addition to this one and Again, this is a low density residential area and they have not submitted a uh, preliminary, so we don't have the application yet completed, but they have sent us um, kind of the mapping and certified renderings. And then the next one is 
uh, Sitka Heights. So this is over uh, 2,900 block Sitka Street, zoning R1 again, and this is a 22 single family units proposed development. They are just about to submit their pre-final. So those are the three plats that we have so far in 2020. And I don't know if Steph wants to add anything else because um, she's been working on them with me as well. Thank you, Madison. Is there anything else you want to add, Stephanie? Um, not really. Um, for Bradley Estates, you guys have seen that before because we went to war with them about where they're going to place that roadway. So we won that battle. So that's a nice little hurrah for Plan Commission. And then for Sitka, that was one that Dave had brought through as I think it was rezoning or maybe a PUD um, for that area because of the lot sizes. So both of those had already seen Plan Commission action and then these, this is the final result to getting those um, properties developed. All right, thank you so much. So we move on to director's report. Thank you very much. All right, um, so uh, update on the last council meeting. Um, right document here so second reading for adoption some ordinances uh, we rezoned the property 1341 Brozig from general commercial c1 to very density residential r3 um, that's that parcel out in front of goodwill and harbor freight tools um, so i'll make way for additional apartment development out there um, and then on wednesday the 22nd after six hours to debate about other items uh, we got to the report of the plan commission um, and everything on there uh, was approved as presented, received in place on file, the communication from Alder Lefebvre uh, about uh, flooding, um, referred to planning staff communication from Alder Dorf about Grandview development, uh, received in place on file, communication from Alder Weary uh, about the Lombardi Crossing project, um, authorizing a CUP for self-storage at 1929 Berlin Road, um, and then amending the zoning code for temporary uses. Uh, those will co up. Um, on the next uh, council meeting next week. Um, as you're aware, uh, this is my last plan commission meeting. Um, at the end of the month, uh, I begin a new okay. position as deputy director uh, for the city of Richmond, Virginia. Um, as I've said, I'm ready to take the next step in my career, and this is a really good opportunity to work um, larger city, deep, deep history, um, amazing culture and, and tons of potential. Um, you know, Richmond's been in the news lately. If, if you've been paying any attention and, and there's definitely a lot of, of change happening um, and, and definitely ready to, to be a part of that. Um, I just, you know, one, uh, I think kind of goes without saying, you know, I've always fought for what's best uh, for the city um, and its residents. I'm really proud of, of what our department um, and our city has accomplished over the last few years. Um, I think we found a lot of solutions to uh, problems other people thought were impossible to solve. Um, we made a lot of policies and processes and parts of our code more uh, efficient and equitable, um, AKA parking minimums. Um, you know, we've really enhanced our neighborhood outreach, uh, business assistance, public arts, marketing programs. Uh, we got four district redevelopment plans done, uh, as well as a citywide pedestrian and bicycle plan, uh, which you haven't been down uh, East Walnut, East of Webster, it's coming to life. Protected bike lanes. I never thought I'd see the day in Green Bay. Amazing, right? Um, you know, we established six tax increment districts, uh, historic preservation district, um, and facilitated over a billion dollars of, of high profile redevelopment projects. And we figured out how to run a Zoom meeting. Um, so, you know, I'm very, well, mostly, right? <laughs> Um, you know, brought on board by Mayor Schmidt, um, you know, I really appreciate Mayor Genrick uh, providing me the opportunity to continue to serve in his administration. Um, and I really enjoyed, you know, working with you, uh, commissioners on a number of really great projects. So um, we got a really great team of employees and I'm super confident um, that our department accomplished great things and wish nothing but the best for you and the city. Bravo, we are going to miss you, Kevin. I, I feel like I only kind of accepted thinking about becoming chair as you were gonna be here helping me. I got you through this meeting. <laughs> but congratulations, we're really gonna miss you.
Thank you. All right, so on to the next item. The date of the next meeting is Monday, August 31st, 2020. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Alder Corpus Dax and second by Vice Chair Bremer. All in favor? Can we just Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you guys all then Monday, August 31st. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Dudley. Well